Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. A little more than a century ago, we believed that everything we could see in the sky was contained within the Milky Way galaxy. We used to believe that Newton's law of universal gravitation, which governs the universe, was static, unchanging, and possibly everlasting. In just a few short years, all of that drastically changed. The 20th century brought about several unexpected discoveries that altered our view of the cosmos. And the hot Big Bang, despite all the observational data we have to back it up, could not be entirely accurate. There is a crazy theory that we reside within a black hole as a result of the JWST's new addition to the Astronomer's Toolkit. How did the Big Bang get it wrong? What is Michio Kaku's opinion on the black hole that we are currently residing in? Let's find out. A black hole is distinguished by its event horizon, a boundary that presents a vastly distinct picture to observers on either side. Any object that exists outside of a black hole's event horizon will still be affected by its gravity due to the space-time curvature caused by the black hole's presence, but it will still be able to escape. It won't certainly go into the black hole, but it could be able to escape its gravitational pull if it moves fast enough or accelerates swiftly enough in the right direction. However, once an object passes the event horizon, it is inevitably swallowed up by the black hole's singularity. A black hole's mass increases when anything that falls into it reaches the singularity very quickly due to the extreme curvature of space-time inside the hole. From beyond the black hole's event horizon, it looks like the object is forming, gaining mass, and expanding. The connection to our cosmic neighborhood is unclear. Everything that can be directly observed in the universe may be broken down into the following types of matter and radiation. Neutrinos, phantom fundamental particles that rarely interact with regular matter, normal matter, comprised of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The mass of the universe is dominated by dark matter, which has so far evaded direct detection. When a mass travels and accelerates across the wavy fabric of space-time, gravitational waves are produced. Photons, or particles of light, convey energy from every electromagnetic event throughout cosmic history. We can see up to around 46 billion light-years away in all directions at the outer limits of what our detectors can detect. Using Einstein's most famous relation, E equals mc squared, we may calculate the mass of the observable universe as the sum of all the energy in all these forms. Then if you'd like, you may pose a really thought-provoking question. What would happen if the entire universe were condensed into a single point? The answer is the same as what would happen if you concentrated any sufficiently huge amount of mass or energy into a single point, a black hole would arise. What's amazing about Einstein's theory of gravity is that the total amount of mass, or what astrophysicists refer to as the Schwarzschild radius, is the only factor that determines how big the black hole is if this collection of mass and or energy isn't charged, electrically, and isn't rotating or spinning, that is, without angular momentum. Surprisingly, the observed size of the visible universe is almost exactly equal to the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole with the mass of all the stuff in the observable universe. The realization appears so coincidental that it makes one wonder if our universe is, in fact, the inside of a black hole. But that's just the start of the narrative. Things get more intriguing as we delve deeper. The discovery of a homogeneous, omnidirectional bath of low-energy radiation appearing from all locations in the sky in the mid-1960s radically altered our understanding of the cosmos. This radiation was uniformly hot in all directions, with a temperature of 2.725 K, a few degrees above absolute zero, already established. The spectrum of the radiation was almost totally black, suggesting a hot thermal origin. Furthermore, it appeared uniform to within one part in 30,000 no matter where in the sky one looked. This radiation, then known as the primordial fireball and now as the cosmic microwave background, was crucial in proving that our expanding and cooling universe was once hotter and denser. The further back in time we look, the more compact, homogeneous, and diminutive everything was. At infinity, this image of the hot Big Bang looks to approach a singularity the same situation found at the central interiors of black holes, where densities, temperatures, and energy are so severe that the laws of physics itself break down. 
Over the past few decades, as our knowledge of the universe has grown and developed, two new findings have shaken the very foundations of cosmology. The first was cosmic inflation. It is now believed that the universe was created by a quick, relentless state of constant exponential expansion that came before the hot Big Bang, rather than by a singularity. It seems as though there was some kind of field that provided the energy that was fundamental to space itself, enabling the universe to expand, and that the hot Big Bang only started after inflation finished. The second was dark energy, which causes distant galaxies to move farther away from us as the universe expands and becomes less dense. The universe behaves as though there is some kind of energy intrinsic in space itself once more, albeit with a much lesser scale, refusing to dilute even while the expansion of space proceeds. People have conjectured that there may be a connection between inflation and dark energy for as long as they have both been known to exist. What could be the relationship there? Black holes may once more hold the key. Black holes grow in size when matter is accreted into them and shrink as mass is lost due to Hawking radiation. Is it possible that the energy inherent to the fabric of space, as perceived by an observer inside the event horizon, shifts as the horizon's size shifts? Does what we see as cosmic inflation indicate the moment when an ultra-massive black hole birthed our universe? Is it possible that black holes and dark energy share some sort of connection? Does this imply that when astrophysical black holes have developed inside of our universe, each one creates a baby universe within it? These theories have been discussed for decades, but no one has been able to prove or disprove them. Despite the abundance of models and theories, many people who study black holes, thermodynamics and entropy, general relativity, and the beginning and end of the universe find this school of thinking to be interesting. Sadly, every physical model that has been proposed thus far has been unable to provide original predictions that can perform the following three tasks. First, reproduce every success that the inflationary hot Big Bang has already been able to account for, including the occurrences that have already been witnessed. Secondly, explain and or account for facts that have been seen that the dominant explanation cannot. Thirdly, Make fresh predictions that are different from those made by the dominant model at the moment so that we can test them later. The most well-known effort at this is arguably Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology, which does make a singular prediction that departs from the predictions of the mainstream cosmological model, the existence of Hawking points, or circles of abnormally low temperature variance in the cosmic microwave background. As a result, the theory that our universe was born from a black hole and the idea that black holes give rise to newborn universes are once again relegated to the realm of theoretical concepts. From both scientific and mathematical perspectives, the hypothesis that black holes and the formation of universes are connected seems appealing. It's possible that the origin of our universe is linked to the formation of a supermassive black hole in a universe that came before our own and that each black hole in our universe has spawned a new universe. Unfortunately, we lack the essential component of a distinctive signature that would indicate whether or not this is the case. According to Michio Kaku, separating a new thought from our existing dominant theories in order to determine the imprint of a new notion on our visible universe is one of the most challenging processes for any theoretical physicist. The James Webb Telescope, on the other hand, discovered enormous galaxies and black holes that existed as early as 500 million years after the Big Bang. Michio Kaku speculates that these are massive primordial black holes that survived the Great Bang. What JWS discovered when it first peered into the distant universe was unexpectedly abundant young, large, and evolved-looking galaxies. These kinds of galaxies would take a very long time to originate, develop, and evolve, according to our current understanding of the nature of the cosmos, which includes dark matter, dark energy, ordinary matter, and radiation, is contemporary cosmology, and by extension the Big Bang, in peril given the discovery of all these galaxies between 300 and 400 million years after the Big Bang. There's been a wide range of outcomes. Our best quantitative predictions still have a great deal of uncertainty, despite the fact that the rules of physics are well known and the starting point, or our initial conditions, are also well known. 
We know that our universe was almost perfectly uniform at the outset of the hot Big Bang according to the idea of cosmic inflation and the patterns of fluctuation seen in the cosmic microwave background. Lower densities and over densities at the one part in 30,000 level were imprinted on top of that nearly uniform background and they were almost but not quite the same on all cosmic scales, being about 3% larger on size of the universe scales than on size of a galaxy scales. We know these defects evolved gravitationally at first, but also had to deal with interactions and pressure from radiation like photons, resulting in a pattern of over-dense and under-dense regions on different cosmic scales. About 380,000 years after the hot Big Bang, neutral atoms form, and the universe expands cools and gravitates in accordance with the rules of general relativity. As long as these density flaws are negligible in relation to the average density of the universe, their development can be easily calculated. The question then becomes, how big do they grow and how quickly? Because as they get bigger, a number of different impacts kick in. It's fairly obvious that the very earliest things, stars, black holes and star clusters, begin forming no later than approximately 150 million years after the Big Bang and maybe as early as only 50, 100 million years after the Big Bang. But these should be relatively infrequent occurrences. It is far less clear how many large, brilliant, developed galaxies we should observe at slightly later times, like 200, 300 or 400 million years after the Big Bang. But even with the necessary uncertainties, we cannot simply base our work on theoretical predictions. For the first time, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope's groundbreaking capabilities, we are starting to find and analyze galaxies located in these incredibly early stages of our cosmic history. Only one other galaxy candidate, unconfirmed, presumably at an age of roughly 330 million years after the Big Bang, and one confirmed galaxy, GNZ 11, were known to exist prior to JWS. There have never been any other stellar or cosmic signals from such early eras. Less than a year after JWS science operation started, the story has drastically changed as of right now. Over 100 galaxy candidates that date back to the first 400 million years of the universe are available to us through JWST, and several of these have already been proven to be both extremely early and extremely far away. The current cosmic record for distance, Jade's GSZ-130, from a time just 320 million years after the Big Bang, is expected to be broken over the next 12 months, and it is also anticipated that at least dozens of new ultra-early, ultra-distant galaxies will soon be confirmed. GNZ-11 is currently only the fifth most distant galaxy known. Many of the early galaxies discovered by JWST have odd, mysterious characteristics that don't seem to fit into our current understanding of the universe. For instance, they seem to be giant, luminous, gaseous, brimming with heavy elements, star-forming and active. We feel we understand how gas or atom-based matter infalls onto these early galaxies and how star formation feeds back and stops further gas from falling in. So the fact that we observe so many galaxies with these characteristics at such an early time is perplexing. There is a limit to how quickly material may accrete onto these items. And while specific physical circumstances can cause an object to momentarily exceed that limit, it shouldn't be sustained over such a long period of time. As a result, something appears to be off when we examine these very young galaxies. But what specifically is wrong? Many individuals, when at a loss for an explanation, turn to the bizarre or the spectacular. They argue that conventional cosmology as a whole could be inaccurate and that the Big Bang theory could be wrong as well. It's likely that either our presumptions about how the initial stages of cosmic structure building go are incorrect or the preliminary data is faulty. Any claims that the Big Bang slash CDM slash standard cosmology is in trouble at this point are unwarranted despite some early observations that may eventually point to a tension between what JWST is seeing and what our current understanding of the laws and composition of the universe are. Without more accurate information, like from a deep, large area, firmly calibrated spectroscopic survey, we are unable to determine whether these galaxies actually have abnormal features. The matter should be resolved by the current Cosmos web survey from the JWST. Even if they do, 
there are a huge number of astrophysical explanations that do not need any fundamentally novel physics that could explain why these galaxies would have such massive and brilliant centers. To be clear, this is not what the data currently imply. The only thing that would truly surprise us at this moment is if there is more mass inside these early galaxies than what is currently known about the regular matter in the universe could possibly account for. Even if these early galaxies are as luminous and huge as the most optimistic predictions, it is entirely plausible that mundane concepts like gravitation, electromagnetism, and stellar gas physics may account for what we observe. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.